Yes, that is exactly the button you should click. Okay, so what am I looking at right now? You are currently looking at a violin plot. Yes, that's the metal plate covering the battery connector. You'll need to remove that plate to get to the connector. Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll check out the Gemini model real-time functionality. It's been a month since Google released Gemini 2.0 and we have a feature called real-time stream. There are three models here but the most interesting ones are show Gemini, the one right here and share your screen. Show Gemini which allows Gemini to see the world through your camera. Share your screen which as the name says it all allows you to share your screen contents with Gemini and it will be able to see your screen and then you can ask stuff related to that. In this video we'll be testing both of them so let's get started. Hello Gemini, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. It shows the Google AI Studio Stream real-time page. Okay, so what am I looking at right now? You are currently looking at a violin plot. It shows the distribution of age across different classes, first, second, and third. Okay, so could you tell me what is this white dot? that I am pointing at right now. That white dot in the violin plot represents the median age for each class. It indicates the central point of the age distribution within each respective class. Okay, so uh, the white dot is the average value. Actually, the white dot is the median value, not the average. The median is the middle value. When the ages are ordered from least to greatest, so half the ages are above it and half below. Okay, my bad. So could you tell me about this black line? What is that? The bl black line you see within each violin shape is the interquartile range, or IQR. It represents the spread of the middle 50% of the data, with the edges of the black line marking the first and third quartiles. Okay, and could you tell me how I can find the Q1, Q2, and Q3? The black lines mark the first and third quartiles, or Q1 and Q3. The median is Q2, which is the white dot in the middle. Therefore, you can find Q1, Q2, and Q3 on the violin plot by looking at the edges of the black line and the white dot respectively. Okay, so currently I am pointing at the Q1 of the first class, right? Yes, that's correct. You're currently pointing to the first quartile, or Q1, of the age distribution for the first class. Okay, so could you also tell me uh, which class has the youngest age? Like, which one of the all the classes, the first, second and third, has the most people with the youngest age. Based on the plot, the first class has the youngest age and has more people with younger ages than the second and third class. Actually, I think the third class has the most people with the youngest age. You are right. My apologies. The third class has the youngest age with the most people compared to the first and second classes. Okay, so could you tell me which class has people with the oldest age? The first class appears to have the most people with older ages. Sure, that's good, Gemini. So, how about this one? What is this? This is a box plot showing the distribution of age across the first, second, and third classes. Each box is divided by a line, which marks the median. Okay, and what does the blue and the yellow boxes represent? The blue boxes represent the distribution of ages for people who did not survive, while the yellow boxes represent the distribution of ages for people who did survive. 
what is this black dot, the one that I am pointing at right now? Those black dots represent outlier data points. This means that the age of those individuals was significantly different from the age distribution within their respective passenger class. Okay, so can you describe the contents of the screen now? Certainly. The screen now shows a medical report. It contains comprehensive echocardiography information. It includes cardiac parameters such as ventricular dimensions, septal thickness, and valve assessments. Okay, so could hold report and tell me what are some more concerning things and abnormal values for the patient's health and could you explain all the results in simpler words that a normal person can understand? Okay, I will try to explain the concerning results in simpler terms. The report indicates that the patient has concentric left ventricular hypertrophy which means that the muscle of the heart's main pumping chamber is thickened. Additionally, while most other readings are within normal limits, the report notes that there is some suggestion of impaired filling during diastole, the heart's relaxation phase. Would you like a more detailed explanation of these issues? Um, no thanks. Could you uh, tell me what are some of the values that are abnormal in this uh, particular report? Looking at the report, the most notable abnormal finding is the mention of concentric LV hypertrophy and the suggestion of impaired filling. The left ventricular dimensions are 4.3 centimeters, which is within normal range, and the right ventricular dimensions are 2.6 centimeters, also within normal range. Hello there, Gemini. So I have this GitHub repo and I want to download its source code in a zip file. I heard from my friend that there is an option to do that. Okay, so you have a GitHub repository and you want to download the source code as a zip file. You mentioned your friend told you there is an option to do so. Is that correct? Yes. Could you tell me how can I do that? I don't want to clone it using the command prompt. I want to download it using the browser. understand you would like to download the source code for the repository you have open in the browser, not through the command line. To do so, you can click on the green code button, then on the pop-up menu you should click on download ZIP. Would you like me to tell you anything else? Okay, so do you mean this one, the one that I am pointing at? Yes, that is exactly the button you should click. Okay, so I clicked Great, it. Click that button. What should be the next step? Correct. Now you should select Download ZIP. Hello, Gemini. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How can I help? Yeah, could you tell me what this model of the phone is? What's the model of this phone? What brand? Certainly. That is an Apple iPhone. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay, what specific model of the iPhone? Sure, the specific model of the iPhone appears to be an iPhone 6s. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, so the thing is that I want to open it up and I want to replace its battery. I already have the battery and I already have taken these screws out and could you tell me how to pry the screen open? I do not have a suction cup. Okay, so you want to replace the battery of your iPhone 6 as and you've already removed the screws but you don't have a suction cup to pry the screen open. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So could you tell me how can I pry the screen uh, with anything uh, thin? You want to pry the screen open with something thin since you don't have a suction cup. Do you have a tool in mind? Or would you like some suggestions for thin objects to use? Yes, I have a tool in mind. I have this. 
but could you tell me where should I pry it like at which corner? Okay, you have a metal pry tool and want to know which corner to start prying the screen open on your iPhone 6s. It is typically recommended to start at the bottom corners near the home button. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay, which corner exactly? There are two corners near the home button. You're right. There are two corners near the home button. To be more specific, you should insert your prying tool between the screen and the frame of the phone at the bottom left or right corner nearest the home button. Does that make sense? Okay, but there are two corners. Can you tell me a specific corner like either the left corner or either the right corner? Yes, you're correct. You can use the pry tool on either the bottom left or bottom right corner next to the home button. Both will work. Okay, so I just read an article where it said that there's a, a dedicated space under the left corner above the headphone jack for such cases like for prying the tools and making the screen pop out. Is that true? You're right. There is a slight gap above the headphone jack that can be used for prying, according to some articles. However, I must advise you to be very careful when prying open the screen, and not apply too much force, as the screen can be easily damaged. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Okay, Gemini. Let me just pry open the screen, and I'll get back to you. Okay, sounds good. Hello, Gemini. Here it is. I have opened the screen and here's the inside view. Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. It looks like you've successfully opened up the iPhone 6s and can now access the battery. Do you need any further guidance? Yes, please. Could you tell me how uh, I, I, I mean, could you tell me uh, how can I disconnect the battery? You want to know how to disconnect the battery from your iPhone 6s. Usually, you will have to disconnect the battery connector with a thin plastic tool or a spudger to avoid damaging the connector. Would you like me to give you more specific instructions? Yes, please tell me which one of these uh, should I open up and which one of these contains the battery connector and which one is the battery connector. Okay, it appears the battery connector is located under the small metal plate that is to the right of the battery itself, near the corner of the phone. You will need to remove that metal plate before you can disconnect the battery. Okay, Does that make sense? So do you mean this one, the one that I am pointing at? Yes, that's the metal plate covering the battery connector. You'll need to remove that plate to get to the connector. So, we tested both the models and we gave them real work scenarios and real world scenarios where we asked them questions related to our screen or our camera and i'm pretty impressed they work quite well even though the project is in its experimental phase it's still quite impressive this whole project uh, that is under gemini 2.0 comes under the project astra of google where they are creating agents that can help you perform daily tasks but in a better way. So there are many more models I believe that are going to be rolled out this month or maybe next month but uh, anyways I'll try to make a video about them as soon as they are released and yeah that's it for this video. Hope you liked it and if you did like this video then please hit the like button and for more such content, please subscribe. Thank you for your time. See you next time.